there. Oh, you went, you went so early. Yeah, over. yeah, yeah. I went to the coffee and the green and stuff. Oh. <laughs> no, because uh, CMC last minute, uh, we couldn't able to use their room. Uh, I think they are having their last, another last minute event, so uh, they go us quite last minute as well. So we wanted to get, um, we want to get, yeah, I think outside room someone is using, that's a problem. Yeah, we initially wanted to ask if uh, City Index cannot, uh, but it's uh, okay. Yeah, so usually small class like this, small sharing session, we can actually do it in our own office. Uh, but if the crowd gets bigger, it's actually quite tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, we have two more, uh, but I'm, I think they are late. Uh, so usually we just start. Uh, I think I, I managed to get to know a little bit of you guys this time as well. Uh, you guys are trading but pretty new. Mm -hmm. right, right? Uh, so today's session, uh, I'll, be, I'll be talking about a little bit of our well play about myself and then of course we'll go into the market as well. Uh, we'll be sharing with you some of our ways in terms of we analyze the market and hopefully you'll be, you'll be able to learn something out of it. It won't be like in-depth kind of analysis. Uh, but the whole uh, session, the agenda of this is to share with you little insights as to how we go through the market, right? Some of our thought process into it. And then uh, we'll be also sharing with you definitely uh, potential trades that you can monitor. Uh, it's not 100% going to be a winning guaranteed kind of trades, all right? But uh, it's good that, you know, you can actually check out how we actually do it and such. Yeah, my speech might be a little bit uh, blurred because of my ulcer in the tongue. It has recovered quite a bit, uh, so I can actually talk better right now. Uh, past few days, uh, it's really, really bad. Yeah. Disclaimer, because uh, every time we share uh, trade ideas, right, uh, it's, it's purely for educational, all right? So uh, if you make money, it's good for you. You can keep the money, uh, but if you want to buy me coffee, you know, uh, feel free to do that. But if you lose money, uh, don't come back and find me, all right? <laughs> Yeah, so just a quick disclaimer. Uh, a little bit about myself, all right. Uh, I'm currently heading the trading department as well as uh, coaching others, all right. Uh, and recently in 2013, end of 2013, I was featured in Canon News Asia um, as well as eToro, a social platform. Uh, and together with my partner over there, JT, uh, we co founded the, the mentorship program called the Four Pillars FX. Right, so Four Pillars, I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit about it uh, later on because. We are going to use this methodology to share with you the market analysis for today itself. Uh, so if you want, you can actually uh, follow me on Facebook, uh, you can add me as friend, etc. as well. Uh, so run a YouTube channel. So this YouTube channel is more for educational basis. So you can actually find quite a bit of uh, the different educational videos that I do and series. Uh, all right? You can just find uh, my nickname, Ikeong, uh, under YouTube. You should be able to find it. All right, so a little bit about Alpha Play. So this is our website, alphaplay.com.sg. Uh, basically, Alpha Play is an investment school, but we do run uh, this school with a certain kind of philosophy towards investing and trading. All right, and these are some of the things that we believe in. We believe in imparting simple strategies, right? That is easy to learn and yet applicable and profitable at the same time to everyone else. All right, uh, when we mean everyone else, we include students, even in, in tertiary education. All right. We also believe in community, right? Uh, in building a cohesive community because the journey towards trading and investing uh, doesn't need to be alone. And we are doing it alone, it's going to be very tough. Right? And why we want a community is because we want the whole journey to be fun at the same time, right? Uh, through a learning process. The last one, which we believe strongly, right, is to really showcase our result transparently. Uh, we are not here to claim that you know every year we can give you 100 and 200 percent return. Uh, but we want to be as realistic in terms of the financial market as well, right? Uh, so I think John also know when we lose, we lose. We just show you know, uh, how we deal with losses. Uh, and then of course, how we deal with uh, money management, risk management as well. I really want to show you that uh, we practice what we preach. So today's setups, uh, market analysis, the entire top flow that we're going to share with you guys is actually exactly what we're going to do. All right? It means the trades that we share with you is exactly the trades that we are also monitoring and going to take. All right, so let's jump into a little bit about four pillars. Uh, just now I mentioned the methodology itself. So this is actually the, the overview of trading itself. Okay, so the whole idea here is uh, it always starts with the foundation. Right, but uh, I suppose when you guys started, you guys always started with finding what is the strategy, trading system you can adopt. But you always miss out this element, which is uh, about your foundation, building your psychology, building your mindset. 
which we believe that uh, is really important because if you don't establish this well, it's just like a house. If you don't have a strong foundation, anything you build on top of it eventually will collapse easily. Then once this is established, um, that's where we have the four pillars coming in. A lot of times when traders pick up skill sets, they always only focus on looking at chart, which is what we call technical analysis. Uh, I like to use the analogy of the house because if you only build your entire house with one pillar, any slight wind that blows, all right, uh, you actually collapse. That means the entire system is not stable enough. But sometimes traders then improve, all right? They realize that risk management is very important. Then they couple, all right? And then I, I, I like to give the energy again, continue. If you build a house with two pillars, 2D plane, it looks good. But when you start to structure it in a 3D formation, right, your entire house is not stable. And that's where we start to build in uh, fundamental and sentiment analysis. The, this entire thing, to us, is actually a very comprehensive and holistic way of uh, trading strategies that you should approach towards FX. All right, so of course, if you trade stocks, this might not be fully relevant, but this is really on the uh, currency market, the FX market. Introduce a little bit, uh, if you are not really familiar with, you know, what is fundamental, what is sentiment. This is a slide that I'll share with you. Uh, for you guys, any of you does uh, stock investing? Stock investing. Yes. You, you do. All right, uh, have you heard of this term called intrinsic value? Right. So uh, imagine in terms of stock, uh, intrinsic value is like, you know, the fair value for, for, for the particular company. So in fundamental analysis, the whole idea here, even for FX, is to actually find out what is the fair value of the currency pair itself. Okay, so the whole understanding of fundamental is to account of what is the economy of the country performing, right? Uh, whether is it good or bad, as well as uh, quantitative, as well as qualitative. Right, meaning we also look into central banks, uh, what are some of the major central banks that are, that are sticking? Are they hawkish, are they bullish, are they, bullish or are they bearish? Okay, sentiment analysis over here, the whole idea is uh, basically reading on the tone and the feeling of the current market. Okay, so because market itself is made up by traders and traders are actually human beings, uh, all of us has emotions, all right? Um, and when all of us actually trade the market, the market itself would then have the tendency of having the emotions as well. Analysis allow you to do that. Uh, technical analysis, I believe everyone will be very familiar. Basically, you look at an analyzing statistics data, which is your price chart, and your charts, uh, candlesticks, etc. Those are technical analysis. Uh, very important is actually risk management. Trader actually bust uh, their account, losing their entire capital is because they do not have proper risk management. So some of the, very quickly, some of the roles of fundamental is to actually give you a better understanding of the currency. Okay, when I mean better understanding is, for example, if you trade USD, how much do you actually understand the US economy? How much do you understand how the USD, how the US dollar move? Fundamental analysis gives you that. Uh, it gives you a proper expectation on the market. In terms of dollar in context of US dollar, uh, the whole discussion in terms of trading wise right now is whether the, the, the Fed, the US federal, or right, will increase interest rate in 2016 itself. Right? So it gives you a proper expectation. So meaning when I mean expectation, if US Fed decide to increase rate, how will it affect the US dollar? And if they don't, how will it affect the US dollar? And of course, uh, closer to what happened recently is Brexit. All right, I'm, just, uh, I'm pretty sure that you guys are aware of it as well. Okay, uh, and lastly, most important, it builds conviction in the direction bias. All right, meaning if you look at US dollar now this week, right, in terms of weekly time frame, are you going to have a bias towards buying dollar or are you going to have a bias to selling dollar? Because this is very important, uh, such that when you trade, you are very clear as to why you're actually buying or selling certain currencies. Okay. The role of sentiment is basically talking about market risk environment. Any one of you heard of this term called risk on or risk off environment? No, you guys never heard of it. Okay, basically, in short, risk on, risk off is like you know, uh, it's like a switch button. Meaning, uh, when financial market is very uncertain. When I mean uncertain, is like for example, when there's a war, when there's a financial crisis. Uh, for example, when Brexit happened. Right, uh, maybe even things like you know, Italy bank might might default, etc. Things like this. Those are uncertainty in the financial market. The financial market, the environment itself is called risk off. Okay, risk off simply means that traders and investors, right? Not only you guys, but big traders and big uh, investors in terms of institutions level, they will become their risk appetite will fall. 
given when they risk appetite for meetings, they, they do not they, they are not willing to take the extra risk for the extra return. That means they are very conservative at that moment. And when they are very conservative, the money will flow from certain asset class to the other asset class. And that will definitely affect your currency market as well. Right? Uh, and of course, the other way also is true, meaning when it's risk on environment, traders and investors uh, in terms of institutions level, they are more okay or more willing to actually take extra risk for the extra return. And then capital will then flow towards the certain asset class and that will affect your currency market. Uh, so we talk about risk on risk off. So with sentiment analysis, you should know how to identify this kind of market environment. Understanding how the market flow in various currencies, all right, that helps you to make trading decisions better. And of course, uh, you know with sentiment analysis, you understand the relationship between different markets as well. For example, when you talk about currencies, uh, it's not a standalone thing. Okay, for example, if we know let's say our uh, Aussie dollar is actually very close, closely related to uh, China market, very closely correlated to the precious metal, right? And even co uh, commodities like uh, oil is very closely related to Canadian dollar, right? So all these things uh, is under sentiment. So if you do not understand it, uh, sometimes you won't be able to trade and leverage on those opportunities or even avoid certain losses in the market itself. Uh, technical, which is very common, very familiar by a lot of traders, uh, basically the, the role of technical is giving you a quick glance as to what is a historical trend. It means in the past, how has price moved? All right? And a lot of traders use it as uh, a, 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 a potential methodology all right, of how they identify their entries, put their stops, as well where they're going to exit with profits as a truck. Okay? And technical analysis gives you the idea of position, meaning exactly at this price I'm going to enter, exactly at this price I'm going to exit. Right, uh, if you do not have technical analysis, you cannot do that. Right, and of course, uh, it provides traders the ability to engage the market in various approaches. When I mean various approaches, meaning you know, some traders prefer higher time frame, like daily time frame, higher uh, H4 time frame. Some traders do shorter time frame, even like minute chart, five minute, fifteen minute. Right, and of course, various approaches here means uh, some some traders trade with different indicators like your MACD oscillator. Some some traders trade with just you know naked chart, meaning price action. This is the this is the benefit and advantage of technical analysis because it's suit to any kind of trader. You can definitely find a style within technical analysis as well. All right, and of course, uh, this one uh, when I talk about it, it's also flexibility in adopting. That means uh, if you are if you are working on a full time job, then uh, it also helps you in terms of looking at it in higher time frame, etc. Okay, so this is a role. But uh, role of risk management is super important. Right, uh, a lot of traders start out without having proper risk management in terms of education in, in this topic. But risk management here cover two. One is money management, one is trade management. Money management basically is how much you risk, how you control your losses. Trade management is when you are in a trade, how do you control that? Right? Meaning if your trade is in profit, how do you manage it uh, effectively to protect your capital as well? Okay, uh, and we believe that out of the four, this is the most important pillar, right? Fundamental sentiment, technical risk management, this is the most important element. Uh, because it has the ability to directly affect your PL. Okay, because if you if you have been trading for some time, I think John also understand this. If you have been trading some time, uh, you know that you don't you do not need to have very high uh, winning rate or success rate. It means your hit rate, all right, out of 10 trades, you do need to hit seven trades to actually be profitable. Right? But of course, uh, as a trader, our aim is to hit as high as possible. Right? But if you start off with proper risk management with at least 50 50 win rate, you actually can already be profitable. Okay? So, this is something that a lot of traders don't understand when they start off. And of course, the most important of risk management is at night you can actually sleep with your peace of mind. Right? Uh, I know traders are uh, some friends of mine who, went, who go into the night uh, not being able to sleep. Right, because they have trades running uh, and when this happens, it affects your next day as well. When it affects your, your state of mind, uh, your performance will definitely be affected as well. And for those who are working, uh, when you cannot sleep at night, you go tomorrow when you report to work, it uh, affects your entire career, etc. So you do not want that. All right, so basically the whole idea of, of the, each of these four pillars uh, give you a very defined role and why they are actually important. Okay, so uh, if you want to find out more as in student information, sometimes we share trade ideas as well. Uh, if you cannot come every week, do like our FB uh, Facebook page, all right? Uh, that's where we post certain uh, trades ideas, certain articles. Uh, but it's, it's not going to be just about currency trading, but we are also looking into investing, that means uh, investing in stocks and companies and equities, etc. 
All right, so let me walk you through now into the market analysis segment itself. All right, what you're seeing over here is what we call the fundamental strength index. In short, we actually term it FSI. Okay, as the term suggests, fundamental strength index, the term fundamental here suggests we are looking at the fundamental pillar of, of it. Okay, uh, and the numbers you see here is basically an extraction okay, of the economic data. So this analysis is a quant quantitative analysis of fundamental aspect. Meaning, uh, indicate economic indicators like your CPI, your employment rate, you know, uh, your NFP, those those data. We actually combine them into an Excel model and we churn them out in such a way like this. Uh, you know, Forex Factory, uh, the calendar where you have all the events and all the data. No, so what we do is we plug all the data in, we put into an Excel model, and then uh, we give it a certain weightage. Right, and then we churn out an index. Okay, so I'll walk you through what it means. So if you look at this, all right, uh, 17 July. So we do this on a weekly basis. That means every Sunday, we will analyze this, and this will last us for one week. Okay, so 17 July is actually uh, beginning of this week. The verdict, the FSI verdict here, you can see if it's a negative, means the economy as a whole is actually contracting. If it's positive, you can see that economy overall is actually expansion. Okay, uh, but that's not uh, the key that we want to focus on when we do our analysis in terms of fundamental. But it's over here: uh, weekly change, monthly change, and quarterly change. Okay, so you can see it's all in in, in one point something. It's all in points format. Okay. So what it means is that on a weekly basis, that means compare right now to seven days ago. Uh, the Aussie dollar, the Aussie economic data actually increased and improved by 1.42 points. Meaning it's actually good for eco uh, in terms of economic uh, perspective of Aussie. Actually actually the highest 29 for Australia is not directly cut from this call. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's not. It's not. It's it's some combination that you have done. Yeah, correct. It's an it's a accumulation of all the data that we collected. This one is since seven years ago, if I remember. Seven years, correct me if I'm wrong. 2009, 2010, so that's about seven years now. Now, this one is based on weekly, monthly, and quarterly. So this one is actually more closer and more relevant to our trading. Okay, so what we want to share with you is, uh, weekly itself is more important. So what you can see is weekly itself, just by the economic data itself, you can see Aussie TV has been improving for the past seven days. Meaning the data release coming in is positive, all right? But Canadian last week was negative. Okay, China is positive. All right, but China over here we don't trade with Chinese yuan, but we know that China economy is closely correlated to Aussie, and Aussie is correlated to New Zealand. So uh, that's why it's important to also track how the Chinese economy is performing. Okay, uh, Japan, you can see it's still weak, right? Meaning uh, last week itself, the data, the economic data that came out from Japan is actually negative, right? Uh, US is strong, Euro is weak, Pound is weak. Okay, but I want to share with you uh, is that this data itself is just based on fundamental economic data. Okay, uh, so we still have other pillars to take note of, right? But just I want to share with you that this is a fundamental economic basis. So we need to get all these index. Correct. So we when we trade, right, uh, we actually want three of it all aligned. We need all three must align. Fundamental sentiment, and then we must find a technical that we can enter. Yeah. So we don't say okay, Aussie is strong, we buy Aussie straight away. It's not that way. Alright, but uh, we want to align fundamental sentiment and technical. Okay, but later I'll come back to this table when we want to combine all of it. Okay, but I just want to introduce you how we do fundamental analysis. This is power. The minus one point four eight is mainly due to Canada. Is yes. It due to the uh no, it's actually based on Canadian data. Meaning, uh, if you go back last week, you can check last week Canadian data. They are they are negative data that has been. But oil is one of them. Yeah. Uh, sorry, oil. You realize that actually US data. Yeah. So for any part of all data, it's actually excluded from the Canadian uh, MSI information. Okay, uh, correlation is not reflected here. Okay, it's a bit pure or economic. Let's ask you a question. Let's say we don't use forex market, will it be a converted over metal or 
Oh, if you have access to Bloomberg, you have more comprehensive data, definitely. Oh. Yeah, but Bloomberg, you have to pay one year, I think, about 20,000 subscription. <laughs> but of course, if your office has Bloomberg, right, make full use of it. One month, 20,000. Okay, maybe NUS, got a cheaper, NUS pay about one year, about 20K. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, now, now we understand fundamental. I uh, just want to talk about sentiment. So, sentiment analysis, how we do it is we look into something called the commitment of traders report. Have you guys heard of it before? COT in short. Okay. Uh, COT basically is, uh, is an is a informative extraction or, or, or information that is provided directly from the exchanges in the US. So it's actually, uh, I would say, it's not something that can be manipulated in a way, right? Because what it tracks is all futures contracts. And all these futures contracts can be tracked by the US exchanges. Okay? So what is the role and the function of this analysis or this COT report? It's just telling you what is the demand and supply of the particular futures. And this one, we are tracking not the demand and supply of retailers like you and me. Okay, but we are tracking the demand and supply of big institutions, for example, your banks, etc., that trades for profit. Uh, but there are, there are things, meaning having that in mind, right? Having after I share with you this, it's not straight away, okay, you see demand and supply, and then you should buy and sell accordingly like this. Because this, the role of it, where you can straight away enter when you can enter, but it's telling you the strength of the trend itself. Is it still very sustainable or is it going to change soon? So let me walk you through. For example, Euro, right? Uh, I, I have all this here because this is going to be the focus for today's yeah, discussion. Sorry. The issue is, this is also you get the data. Oh, this one, getting the data, if you Google COT report, the first link itself is where you can get it. So it's accessible online. Mm -hmm. But I want you, I want to uh, briefly walk you through how we read this. Net here simply means uh, the, the summation of buy and sell. So if you see negative means sell position has more traders holding on to it. So straight away you know directly is uh, overall there are more short positions than long position. Okay, long week to week. This is actually tracking the change from last week to this week. Okay, so when you're tracking the change. Negative means there's a minus in position. That's an addition in the position. So you see long is minus, short is positive. What it means is there are people or there are traders exiting their long position. There are traders entering new short positions. Telling you over here is overall is negative, meaning overall is short, okay, it's bearish, and you see people entering exiting from long, people entering in short. So it's this information is telling you that the downtrend will be sustainable in Euro. Just, okay. Similarly, if you look at pound, okay, overall it's still negative, if short is positive, meaning people are still interested in shorting pound. Okay, when I mean in people, I don't mean you and I again, huh? I mean big institutions. Yes, this is for this week. So this again is a weekly data set. All right. So I want you to take note, euro and pound is both uh, sentiment wise is negative, negative. Huh? So I want you to align with fundamental as well, negative, negative. Okay. So two things align in, in this aspect. Okay. And if I walk you through to the remaining three ones, that is going to be a focus of this week as well. Japanese yen. Look at this, long people exiting, short adding a lot. Look at the relative terms, all right? Uh, but take note that the overall position net here is still positive. In the Japanese futures market, traders in, in the buy position is still more than the short. But you can see it's changing already. So the trend might start to trade, change in terms of Japanese yen. Okay, you look at Aussie. Total is very positive, all right? You can see the increment in long positions outweigh the short one by so much, okay? Meaning people are buying, uh, the interest of buying into Aussie has started to increase. And for Kiwi itself, the overall net change from negative to positive. And you can see long positions, short positions, people are exiting out of it. To the line, this one overall is short, bearish for yen, uh, strong for Aussie, strong for Kiwi. Right? So if you align this back to 
see weak yen, strong Aussie, strong Kiwi. Okay, so what I want to share with you is we don't only look at one, but you need to align fundamental, align sentiment, couple them together. Uh, we then, from here, we can filter off traits and decide which traits to look in terms of technical analysis. Okay? So before we straight away jump into technical analysis, we need to understand what is some of the key risk events that's taking place in this week. Okay, because all these events is gonna move the market. Okay, your chart don't move the market. Your chart just track the movement of the market. All these news and fundamental moves the currency market. Okay, so this week focus. All right, uh, we won't talk about what happened yesterday. We won't talk about what happened today, really, because it's irrelevant. We won't be able to take opportunities of it. But let's focus on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. One of the key news that is very important for this week is actually your pound. Average earning index plus claim and count change. What is the claim and count change? You all know what's NFP? No, 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 no. Ah, not payroll, you know? Yeah. What does it track? Yeah. What does it track? NFP. Employment, right? Okay. It tracks an employment. NFP is a name in the US, right? Uh Clement Count Change is a name for UK. Right? But basically it means the same thing. It's basically tracking employment. Okay. Average earning index uh, in US is called the average hourly earnings. It's tracking inflation. All right, meaning it, uh, on average, how much is the trade? Uh, how much is the people and the and the uh, the, the, the community, you know, the, the local people are earning? Right. So this tracks inflation. This check track employment. Okay. This two data is very important: employment and inflation. So we know that on pound is actually weak. Okay. Uh, even if you don't have fundamental, you don't have sentiment, you already know that with reset happening, pound itself is is really weak. And uh, if you read further into what the Bank of England statement actually released, they're also very clear that they tell you that they're going to go into easing. Easing means they're going to print money to stimulate the economy. Oh. All right, because when they exit, uh, they get something uh, in technical terms, it's called liquidity crunch. Meaning a lot of money will actually flow out from the country and that's not good for the economy. Right, so what the bank, the central banks need to do is they need to then put back some money into the economy. And how they do it is they basically print money. Okay. When you print money, uh, supply demand, right, supply increases, right, and therefore the value of pound will actually fall. This in mind, this two data is important why I say that is because if let's say it increase the actual data released tomorrow is actually positive, meaning more than expected. If pound prices starts to go up, right, it presents you an opportunity to sell at a better price. Okay, so I want you to understand our top flow in analyzing the market. It's not straight away good data I buy straight away. It's not. Sure, is we already understand what is the fundamental happening, what is the sentiment happening. If this is good data, it push price higher. It gives us a better opportunity to short pound. Okay, because we are riding at least few days to one week for our trade. Okay, so we, when we may trade some of our time frames, we look at is H1 and H4. So our trade generally can last us a few days to at least a week. Okay, so that's why when, when price starts to go up because of good data like this, we see ourselves as having good, better opportunities to actually sell the pound. Okay, on Thursday itself, our uh, important thing is euro minimum bid rate this is where they're going to in, in, release their interest rate all right, as well as press conference, meaning uh, Mario Draghi we're going to be going on stage and talk about you know what's the outlook, etc. Problem, and it's going to be the uh, it's going to be the focus of this week itself. All right, because uh, with Brexit, UK exiting Euro, uh, there'll be a lot of countries then thinking, can I go independent? All right, and with the most recent one about Italy, okay, uh, there's some bank issues uh, and concerns over there in, in the country itself. So the overall outlook of eurozone is actually not healthy. Expectation over here is uh, Mario Draghi. We're gonna be saying something very doish, and when he says something doish, it's gonna impact the market negatively. Meaning euro will have the tendency to actually fall, meaning drop. Right. So all this also align with our fundamental of euro, align with the sentiment of our euro. Okay. Uh, so this uh, that's where then only we go into the chart and look at technical as to where we want to enter, where we want to get out, and where we put our stop loss. 
Okay, uh, this one is actually pound dollar. All right, so it's GBP USD. All right, this one is H one time frame. Basically, in terms of technical analysis, I'll just share with you very briefly the methodologies that we use. All right, we basically use three kinds of methodology. Okay, uh, if you understand technical analysis, do you know how many kinds of market environment is there in terms of technical analysis? No. John? Three. Oh, okay, what's the three? Trending, up, down, sideways. Oh, very good. You guys know that? You know, yeah. Like, like Uptrend, downtrend, sideways. Okay, so basically, environment. But if you group them into two big categories, basically trending market, ranging market. Okay, so as a trader, as a technical analysis kind of trader, you need to understand, you need to have two kinds of methodolo methodologies to tackle two kinds of market. And one to tackle trend. When market range, you basically don't know what to do. But when market range, uh, you, if you are a range kind of trader, then when market trend, you cannot capture on it. Okay, so you need to have two methodologies to do it. Uh, we have three. One is to capture trend, one is to capture range. Uh, the other one is to capture count, uh, counter trend. Meaning at the start, when the trend starts to change, that's called counter trend. Okay, so this setup that I want to share with you is a counter trend strategy. Okay, uh, in short, we call it a divergent setup. Okay, why divergent is basically we just use RSI, a very simple and default indicator that uh, all MT4 will have. Okay, we use uh, period 7. Uh, there's no secret behind like why period 7, why not 14, why not 21, etc. Uh, basically, it doesn't really matter. The whole idea here is you need to understand the concept of. So over here, you see price action is double top, right? And over here, RSI forms a lower low, here forms a higher high. Uh, sorry, lower high, higher high, it forms a divergence, very right? basic technical analysis. When this forms, uh, we don't straight away enter. That's not our plan, okay? Because it can continue going higher. So what we want to do is we want to wait for price action to break it first, and then we wait for a retracement. Okay, so when price break it, it confirms that this is actually the top already. Okay, so what's next for us is we wait for a retracement towards the 61.8, and look to short market. Okay, so in other words, other than just divergence, we use Fibonacci retracements as well. Okay, very simple. Uh, you pull Fibonacci from here to here. Our entry is at 618. Stop loss will be above 78.6. TP1 is over here, TP2 is over here. Alright, so if I put it into exact price level, uh, this is where we're going to enter stop loss and profit. Okay. But I do not want you to just go away today, you know, with this in mind. But to pick up how we actually process from fundamental part to sentiment part, then eventually understand what is going to be the focus for this week, and then we move into technical analysis so that we know when we take this trade, we are very confident that we have done all our initial planning. Okay, uh, doesn't mean that this trade is going to be hundred percent. You know, higher at one percent plus chop of winning strategy, a uh, winning trade, but it just gives you that confidence in entering a trade. Of course, if you look at this, risk to reward is is more than one is two. All right, with pro proper risk management, it's gonna help you profit over a period of time. Okay. One uh, that we want to share with you is this one called Euro Canadian. All right, again, if you focus on the fundamental, you know, Euro is negative sentiment. Yeah. Sorry, just now for that trade, right? Yeah. I think we are still waiting for the 61.8. Yes, we are still waiting for it to go up. Yeah, it's a pending trade. Okay. Most of the time when we trade, it's all pending trades, meaning we don't actively sit in front of the computer and wait for the price to hit. We just set it there, and when price eventually goes up, then we enter the trade automatically with a pending order. Uh, our style of trading is not those that uh, every day, you know, US market open, we see in front of the and then look for opportunity. But how we do it is on the weekend, we do all the analysis, and then on Monday, we key in all our pending orders, and then we let it run for the week itself. Of it is doing like this. Uh, of course, it depends again back to the foundation that I share with you whether you are this kind of traders or are you those kind that, you know, you need activity one. Meaning, uh, if I ask you to be patient and trade like this, you cannot take it on. You have itchy fingers, you just open up your phone and you start trading. Mm -hmm. Then that also doesn't fit you. Lah. So you need to go and find out what's the strategy that fits your personality. Right? So that's why uh, we say the foundation is the most important part of trading. All right. So this one, just I share with you, if tomorrow news becomes positive, right? Uh, 
the, the ideal situation is it's going to push price higher, hit our entry, and then over the next few days, because the fundamental, the sentiment of pound is still bearish, over the next few days, it starts to drop back and follow the trend itself. Right? So this is our approach when we start to analyze and trade the market. So this one is actually, uh, if you look at it, why counter trend is because it is moving up in the trend, right? It forms a reversal kind of price action patterns, double top. And then uh, we want, we are then interested to capture the initial, which one, which one? Uh, no, no, this one starts from 11 of July. Today is about 20. Mm. Yeah, more than a week. But, but it's actually not crucial because you are only focusing on here. Right? Uh, I always share with John when we do analysis, we focus from right to left, not from left to right. Because over here, you can exploit any opportunities already. It's done you. That, that, that yeah. would be different if you have a longer time frame. No, if I chop it like this, it still be the same, right? you have a double top there. Yeah, so you're telling me you are interested on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm interested on that, not here. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this one is a counter trend. Uh, you can spot this kind of setup when it's trending in the past. You won't have this kind of setup. But when it's ranging, we adopt uh, another one called price uh, advanced price action, uh, which some of you guys will also be familiar with. It's called harmonic patterns. Okay, this only occur when market is in a range environment. Okay, so this methodology is used to tackle when markets is ranging. Okay, so this is Euro Canadian. Uh, again, if you focus back on fundamental, Euro is bearish. Okay, sentiment of Euro is bearish. Uh, Canadian, if you follow the fundamental, is actually uh, negative as well. Right? Uh, but this one, why we are still taking it? Because our focus this week is bearish on Euro for Thursday. Okay? So we are expecting that Euro will be the main driver, meaning Euro will be the main focus on driving this particular pattern. Okay, so where we're gonna enter, uh, I'm not gonna walk you through how to set up this uh, this pattern because if you're interested, just go and Google. Uh, you probably can find some of it. I also have a YouTube video uh, if you want this on my channel. There's a one hour, no, less than that, about 45 minutes webinar. Uh, you can go and take a look at it. It's pretty comprehensive and introducing to you how to analyze harmonic patterns. Mm. Right, so my YouTube is free. Then you can go ahead and analyze it. Uh, so this pair itself, where we're going to enter, will be at this level where the pattern completes. So we are still waiting for price to go higher. All right, uh, and we, we will never know whether it's going to go up that high, but the whole idea is if it doesn't, then it's okay. All right, so we don't chase over a trade, but we wait for it to come to us. All right, so our entry is over here. Our stop loss is 1.550, which is slightly above this high. Right? So the whole idea here is price, if price breaks above that high, it basically breaks above that range already. So we are no longer interested, so we want to get out. So that's where our stop loss is. Okay, take profit 1 and 2, we are using Fibonacci again, 38.2 and 61.8. Right? But if you remember, part of the risk management pillar is that we talk about trade management as well. So sometimes uh, we don't take TP1, TP2, we just trail our stop loss to, to write as far as we can. Okay, so this is another trade setup that I want to share with you. The last one uh, for this week, all right, usually we share three. Huh? The last one in this week is again pound against Swiss franc. Okay, so you can see this was initially trending, and then what happens is market starts to range in this in this box, all right, in this higher bound and lower bound. So when market range, that's where we get a lot of patterns again. Okay, so this pattern itself, similarly, we are waiting for price to go higher. Right, so if you follow today, uh, pound news is actually positive. All right, so supposedly the positive news should push, push price higher, uh, but if you check your chart, it didn't. Right, uh, so again, because fundamental and sentiment for pound is still very bearish. Right, so a, a, a short term kind of positive news like this won't help to push price. Right, so in other words, don't be impulsive in trading uh, those news releases. Right, uh, because fundamental analysis doesn't equivalent to trading news. Yeah, it's very different. Okay, so in terms of entry, uh, and entering will be around this level. All right, uh, stop loss is very similar. It's at the previous high. So if you can see price, if price goes higher and break this high, it basically breaks the entire range, and we are no longer interested in holding on to this trade. So we get out with a small loss. All right, take profit is over here one and two. Basically, it's over this 
38.2 Fibonacci and 61 point. Actually, uh, mm. if you use this pattern, it can go up to that high. Mm. How long it take to wait? How many candles? Oh, this one, uh, actually, we don't count the candle. Okay. So, but how we do it is because our analysis is done on every week. That means if this trade we key in the panic order, if let's say on Friday the market closed, right? Uh, it's still not trigger. Then next week we reassess again whether this trade is still viable. It means every weekend we erase all our analysis and redo it. Yeah. But for example, maybe Wednesday, Thursday, price drops before going up, right? So when price drops over here, basically this setup no longer valid. Then we will cancel it, right? But usually, even if you don't cancel it, uh, if it drops, you won't hit it. It doesn't matter to you. Mm. All right. Any questions regarding this? All right. So basically, this is the top flow that we want to share with you. Uh, any of you actively trading kind or I don't know, you want to share your experience with me? Then we can walk through. Any other trade? <laughs> define, define any other trade. How long have you been trading? How long? Very, very fast question. I don't remember. Can't remember. remember. So, so quite. Yeah, so, so very experienced. No, no, no. So very experienced. For a few months. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but do you have any like strategy or plan that you are following properly? No. You have not. Nah. What about yourself? You look, you seem to understand FX quite a bit. So. That's good enough. <laughs> we seem to understand what I'm sharing today, which is very good. I want to look, look intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> look intelligent, but actually I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Now how many of you are trading life? Life means uh, you not your level yeah, company. Well, that's why we're here. Just ah. skip life. <laughs> but how do you feel trading life? Is it your first time trading? I don't. I don't think it's your first time trading life already, right? No. I've been trading for maybe like a few few months. Ah, few months. Okay. For me, for me, I don't. So overall experience to you right now is it positive or huh? not positive? Positive returns. Positive returns. Yeah. Uh, make money. Okay. For me, after I know John. Wow, so <laughs> must treat him to some coffee yeah, already. I don't think really. Okay. Short go. <laughs> what about you? What about yourself? It was a good trade, but it's not coffee. Ah, okay. Okay lah. So the the reason why I ask all this is I want to see whether you are aware of the psychology and emotions behind trading. Right, uh, because a lot of times when people start off, right, uh, when they make money, it becomes wow, very happy, right? Uh, mm -hmm. They have a tendency to then start being a little bit too confident. Yeah. And then they start to say, wow, can la, I go in bigger and bigger. <laughs> and then after that, then they, they bust the entire account, right? So that's normally the cycle of trading, yeah. right? So I uh, just, just wanted you guys to, to see where you guys are to be more aware of it. Not no. <laughs> Hopefully, you don't go through the cycle la, with John, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any any questions you want to ask regarding this, or you know any specific market you want me to to analyze and give you certain analysis, I can do that as well. Um, yeah, because we we can do. Okay, John would know. Um, I I can do technical analysis pretty quick lah. So if you want, I can actually do live on on on. I say not meaning live means right now I can do it analysis and share with you my top process. On it. Or I, if you want, if you don't have that, it's fine. You get me. Yes, Wow, such exotic pair you guys trade. Now it's one day or two day trade one. New trade. What's the? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. You trade that, but the spread itself is killing you, right? Not really. Yeah.
Oh, because because of the recent recent news, uh. So you guys shorted it. No, as in you shorted that, so you buy USD. Oh yeah, you long this, uh. Okay, but what's your strategy? Maybe I can share with you some of the comments. I don't know. Uh, so you're based on what you enter trade, based on the news. Based on what's that? Okay, la. okay, I don't I don't have knowledge in the fundamental aspect of Turkish uh Mira. Uh, I don't have sentiment aspect of that as well because I don't trade this kind of exotic pair, right? But I can give you advice or, or not I won't say advice right now, but I give you my point of view and then see how you can uh take that recommendation to improve on your trading right now. Uh if you know the other pair that is exotic against dollar, uh you guys know of it. Oh. Okay, heard of it. Okay, you heard of this this uh, this term called you uh, not term but this this counter of US index. Heard of it? US index. Yeah, I show you how it looks like. Okay. Uh, why why I want to mention this these two things is US index is DXY, right? Uh, over here DXY. So some of your brokers in terms of MT4 might have. If you don't have, you can go over to Trading View. Right, they have a lot of uh, counters they're tricking to search out for. Right, what I want to mention to you, DXY dollar index, is because when you trade US uh, TRY and US NOK, right, they actually, other than the news thing, right, they actually track the US dollar very closely. Okay, because the USD index, the US dollar index, is actually made up by a basket of few currencies. Okay, so this, if you are, I'm not saying that if you only trade that two, then this is modern, but if you're trading on any other currencies like uh, your euro, dollar, pound, dollar, dollar, yen, it all helps because if you look at this, overall currently you can see dollar for the near term is actually going up. In terms of technical alone, uh, right? It's going up. So you know that dollar overall is actually strengthening. Okay, so it helps you to give you an image that, okay, if you're buying on dollar or uh, whatever pair it is, it's actually okay. Right, because you are aligned together with your dollar index. Okay, uh, but in terms of this one, if you use it against like let's say euro yen or pound yen, that is not effective. Okay, this is purely on, on that. Right, so I want to share with you the correlation aspect, right? If I show it to you. Okay, so you see, uh, I met the USD index with your the pair that you mentioned, all right? US uh, Turkish lira. You can see when dollar drops, your your currency pair drops as well. Okay, uh, especially this pair, which is your Turkish lira and your Norwegian Krono, they track your USD index very closely. You can see when it drops, it drops. When it goes up, it goes up. When this goes up, this goes up. But the magnitude of change is different. But the direction is very similar, right? Uh, the move, the closest two pair currency pairs that track USD index is actually this one plus your Norwegian uh, Krono. Okay, your U. I don't trade it, but I'm aware of it. Yeah, because I, I look into USD index, I know what makes the basket of it, what forms the basket in terms of it, right? Uh, if you compare it to Euro Dollar. Right, it's not that effective. It, uh, it's not that effective because you are looking at euro. Euro is also another big, uh, big bulk of currencies, la. Right, but you can see the relationship is inverse, mm -hmm. and in terms of direction, it's also pretty clear cut. When it goes up, this comes down. When it comes down, this goes up. Okay, and you can see over here, it goes up. This one comes up. So it's pretty pretty close in terms of the relationship, all right? So this is how uh, it's important to also when you trade that kind of exotic pair, uh, it's good to look at USD index to see whether you are on the right direction overall, all right? Because we don't have the fundamental access to it. We don't have the sentiment access to it. 
All right. Uh, even if you look at chart, uh, technical analysis can apply on, on, on your stocks as well. Yeah, so some of the stocks we actually also use technical analysis. The rule of it is to pinpoint where we want to enter. Like for example, uh, Tony talks about do tech. All right, uh, do tech. Uh, we, we also, again, the approach is the same. Fundamental of the company, is it good? Is it a solid company? And then we go into uh, technical analysis to find where we want to enter, aligned together, similar to currencies FX. So you have those stocks also. Yeah, we do stocks also. Uh, but JT, my partner, is more uh, on stock investing. We don't trade stocks, we invest in stocks. Uh, meaning it's more of a longer horizon. Right? Uh, but for us, trading means a shorter time frame. Okay. Which stock you are? Oh, that one's sensitive, lah, but <laughs> we won't say which one we invested in, but the shortlisted uh, one, one you know, like, uh, few, uh, uh, meaning uh, US, uh, Singapore mainly, uh, Malaysia as well, uh, Japan. Australia as well, yeah, uh, but quite a few lah. Apple. Yeah, uh, next, next week earnings and then uh, how will you trade? Okay, since we have some time, let's walk through a little bit on that. You want to share? Apple? Are you comfortable sharing Apple? Yeah, US are. Mm. US are not interested. Okay, uh, let me walk you through my analysis then, okay? But he's a specialist in investing. Uh. Uh, so meaning, why I mean specialist, he invested for seven years. So uh, my trading experience is about five, close to four, four, four past five years, right? So in terms of that, his investing is still better, right? Uh, but let me let me show you uh, our analysis. My my personal opinion in 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 that first.